Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to, to Grindstone Island United Methodist Church. My name is Jeff McCarn, summer minister, and we're sure glad to have you with us in this time of worship where we're pondering what is it that God is asking of us in this life? And who are we as God's people? And one dimension of that I want us to think about today is how is it that we could be an inclusive people? And to what degree do we see evidence that God is an inclusive God? So that's a difficult thing for us, and I invite you to join us in worshiping the goodness and the truth of this God that is in our midst. Thanks be to God. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And may his face shine upon us. So that your way may be known upon earth. And your saving power among all nations. Give us hearts to praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let us all be glad and sing for joy. For you do us to you. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth be to God. Let the people praise you, O God. Let us worship the essence of what is just and true and good. Eternal God, whose image lies in the hearts of all people everywhere, we live among people whose ways are different from ours, whose faith is foreign to us, whose tongues are unintelligible to us. Forgive our pride and arrogance, which assures us that our faith, our language, our people, our country are superior to those around us. Help us to remember that you love us with your great love, and that in yearnings of others' hearts are much more than our own, and are known to you. Help us recognize you in all the words of truth, all the things of beauty, every action of love. We pray through Christ, who is the possession of no church, no group, but redeemed us all. Through a mighty love. Amen. Well, we confess our pride as people, and that's pretty much what we mean when we say we are a people who are infected with sin, that we have an orientation that puts ourselves first. And that means that we put other people who are different from us second or third or ignore or invisible to us or in our ignorance we oppress. So thanks be to God that we are redeemed from our situation, that our impulse to be superior to others or to have our way be the right way, God will repair us. God will show us the light 
that God's way is the way of inclusion, we are forgiven and we are transformed and we are being drawn into the kingdom. Thanks be to God. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon, Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. So today we have these two texts that may seem unrelated. Isaiah who's relating that God is a God of inclusion, foreigners, And I guess you just have to remember that foreigners to the nation of Israel were not brothers or sisters. They were outside of the family. They didn't practice the worship of God in the temple. They didn't understand the dietary laws and sign of the covenant to be circumcised and they were foreigners they didn't practice our way and Isaiah says these people if their heart is in the right place they're my people they're going to come up to my mountain and be with me and they're going to be in this house of prayer that includes Israel which is another way of saying includes the people who understand the covenant and its tradition and history, and but it also includes 
those outside of Israel who are in spirit, who are connected, who are bound up together, I don't know, you might say with love. So now we take that into this gospel text where Jesus seems focused on his mission as the Gospel of Matthew says. It's also in the Gospel of Mark, um, but it's really straightforward in the Gospel of Matthew. Look, you know, we've left the location of the house of Israel. We were in Tyre and Sidon. And um, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jesus says, and not for those outside of its boundaries, outside of its traditions. So, lady, you and your daughter, I'm sorry, but um, it's not in my job description. But clearly, Jesus knows about Isaiah. Do you remember in, in Luke's gospel, we're told he goes back to his hometown, and he goes to his home synagogue, and is handed a scroll to read. It's the scroll of Isaiah. And he looks for the place, which in our text is Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor, release of captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the prisoners go free. And today... Jesus says to his hometown crew, that scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I am here embodying that job description. But even still, starting out, he has this sense that, but I'm talking about the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the poor that I've come to bring good news to. That's the captives that need releasing. Those are the oppressed people that I am addressing. But then he encounters this woman who calls him by this divine title, Son of David, have mercy on me. And it's hard to read a little bit if you're a believer in Jesus to see Jesus' reaction. The disciples are saying, look, she's bothering us. Don't, you know, what are we going to do about her? She's such an annoyance. And Jesus is silent, doesn't address her at all. But she keeps at it because she knows she has this heart. She's connected. She understands what's required for her healing, her daughter's healing. And Jesus says, um, it's not fair to give the dogs, the food, the good food, which is not a happy thing to say to someone. And she's, she's like, well, well, you know what? Even dogs under the master's table get a few crumbs that fall off. And in that moment, Jesus changes his mind. And he recognizes the sisterhood and the brotherhood of this human being who is crying out in her pain and anguish. And he comes to the understanding that, oh my God, you are included. You are part of my job description. You are a child of God even though you're an outsider, even though you're different from us, even though you don't practice our way, you are our family. And the question I want to leave you with today, is that who God is? Asking us to be open if Jesus, who we think of as the Son of God, who we think of as without sin, who is in some way human perfection, if, if that person can admit, you know what, my idea of inclusion was not big enough. If Jesus can be open, 
to that realization. I feel like God is saying to us, that is the way. Inevitably, we're going to draw circles around our people. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to look after the citizens of my community. And you guys over there in your community, you know, you take care of yourself. We take care of our own, right? Isn't that a common thing to think and say? Well, God, I believe, is telling us, look, all the people that you see out there who are foreigners, they're going to be on my mountain. They are part of my beautiful family. And I just got back from a hiking trip with two of my kids, and we went up some high mountains. And a lot of the times I, I wasn't sure I was going to get up to that 5,300 feet to be on the holy mountain. And I know there are a lot of people that wouldn't be able to get up there. But God's inclusion is like, you know, you deserve to be up here on the holy mountain all together with this beautiful feast of brotherhood and sisterhood. So let's remember that that's the essence of who God is, not to be self-righteous in our own conclusions that we know what's right. We have our commitments. We know what's expected of us for our people. Be open like Jesus was to the notion that somebody outside of what we consider our people, that those are our family members. And God is calling us to minister to them, to reach out to them, to include them, because God does. May God's power and love and openness to that shift be with us always. Amen. Let us pray. God of us all, Forgive us when we are petty and when we follow our natural instincts to draw our circles of identity close to the characteristics that we embody. Same DNA, same tradition, same context of growing up, same custom, same language. And forgive us when we look at all other languages, all other cultures, all other traditions, all other humor as foreign, as suspect, as not as good. Our prayer is that you would illuminate us as you illuminated Jesus to recognize our common humanity Lord, we, as this island church struggles with our separateness, know that we are thinking about each other in our, in our aloneness and in our, in our struggles, and we'd like to lift up especially Manly Russo and his family as he's gone through this really terrible week. And we're so encouraged to hear that he's gone through his surgery and in and out of the ICU and with his typical bravado intact. And Lord, there are many other people that we are aware of that are challenged, that are afraid, that are vulnerable. Pray that you would hold us close Remind us that you are with us and that your healing goes before us and after us. And that even in death, you are with us, holding us up, bringing your light of love into us and to everyone around us. We pray for this church that it might be a light to our community, to this island and beyond. 
and that all the people who work so hard to make this church come alive, stay alive, nourish us, make us your people, strengthen our faith so that we might be welcoming to those beyond our island circle. God, we pray all of these things, the things I've spoken and the many, many things on our hearts this morning. We pray them in the strong name of Jesus who taught us this intimate, powerful prayer. And I'm gonna ask our friend Art to lead us in that beautiful prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Glory, glory. Take these gifts which we offer to you and make them be the power of your love entering into a world of need, a world where people are looking for good news, looking for some kind of sense of belonging, where life is meaningful. Let these gifts be transformed into that power, whether it's through our mission giving to the food pantries in Clayton and Gananaque, or whether it's just to sustain this church community so that we might be a presence through our medical clinic and through our outreach and through our offering of water to the island. Strengthen us. Let these gifts do your work. We pray it in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
Okay, go out into the world now with the confidence that the God who is the source of love, which means is understanding completely about inclusion of the other, of the foreigner, of the people we don't think fit in. We all know that feeling. Maybe I don't belong here. Maybe these are not my people. Maybe I'm not wanted. Maybe there's a little sense of rejection or people putting me down. That's the sin that we're asked to overcome, to fight against our job. And God's Spirit is asking us to go out now and make everyone you see feel included, like they're with us, like they're part of our family. Everyone is headed for that holy mountain. Let's be God's hands and feet to make that happen here and now. May God's kingdom come. Alleluia. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See you next week.